Hey everybody, and thank you for joining me into this week's sermon. We believe that this word is going to have a major impact on your life. So let's get ready to hear the word of God. When God blesses you with anything good in your life, it's never for you just to hold on to it. It's actually, you're not supposed to be a lake, you're supposed to be a river. It's supposed to flow through you, keeps you alive. It keeps you living a life of purpose. If we become selfish or we become hoarders or we just hold on to it or greedy, this is what happens. We start getting depressed, our lives lose meaning, and we start making some really bad decisions because you were not created to be greedy. You were created to fulfill purpose, and purpose is blessing other people. I'm going to get that. So now I'm going to give you a circle. And every week we've been talking about a circle of blessing that God wants or a cycle of blessing that God wants to initiate in our lives. Now, some of us here are in some good cycles. Some of us might be in bad cycles, bad thinking, bad results, bad wrong actions. We've got consequences. Things aren't turning out the way you want them to turn out. I got good news for you. God's not bringing in you in here to tease you. He's not bringing, in you here in, bringing you in here to put you down. He's bringing you here to lift you up and let you know there's some good news. You can change and your cycles can change. If your cycle, you don't like the cycle you're in, it can be changed and it can start today. Isn't that good news? Things can change. It doesn't need to end up the same way it's always ended up. So this is a cycle I want to share with you. And this is also a law of nature. And this is a cycle. God blesses me with seed. I plant it and I receive a harvest of blessing from God. I'll say it again. God blesses me with seed. I plant it and I receive a harvest of blessing from God. I'm going to say it one more time. God blesses me with seed. I plant it and then, God, then I receive a harvest of blessing from God. Now, seed represents this. God's giving you abilities, ability. God's giving you, God's giving you resources. God's giving you time. God's giving you strength. God's giving you ideas. But an idea that is not planted or acted on will never produce a harvest. You could have talent, but if you actually never serve, you'll never see a harvest. You could have resources, Money, but if you never plant it or investment, invest it, there will never be a return or interest on the investment. So God has given us, and, and this sermon is very simple, has two major parts, God's part and our part. God's part, he gives us seed. Say it with me. God gives us seed. In Genesis 1.29 it says this, Then God said, look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. So he creates man and he has a private meeting with Adam and Eve. And he, goes, and he says this, look, look. And it's an exclamation point. What he wants to do is show them that there's actually provision for their future. That they don't have to worry about their future. I've given you seed and if you plant it, you'll always have fruit trees You'll always have provision. Your needs will always be met. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to give you seed, and this is what you're going to do. You're going to plant it, and you'll always have provision. What I love about this is it's promising us that every single person in this place can have a great harvest in their future. Now, if you don't like the way your life is right now, it's good news. You could start planting different seed. You can not only start planting different seed, maybe it's just time to plant. When I started out even um, speaking, the, God's given me a gift to speak. It was in seed form though. And I was so scared to speak. My first speaking engagement, I was invited to a church as a guest speaker. And I spoke for five minutes. After I was done, I sat down, and these are my words. I go, that's all I got. 
And I sat down and, and the, the pastor that invited me, he just says, all righty then, is that it? It was kind of embarrassing. No, it was embarrassing for them and it was embarrassing for me. But there was something good I did there. I planted the seed. You know what that means? I took action. Everything starts in seed form. Do not let your fear, do not let your greed, do not let your procrastination stop you from planting seed. Don't let your past, don't even let other people's thoughts about you or thoughts about yourself. You, we, this is what we need to do. Get a seed and plant it and then it will turn into a harvest. Start where you're at. So we plant seed. So what's our seeds that we have? Seeds of the word of God, seeds of resources, ideas, seeds, seeds of money. We got seed. So now we're going to look at right now this illustration because scientists and biologists, they know almost everything about a seed. This is a seed. They've studied it. And this is what, there's a seed coat, which is called a testa. There's an embryonic root which is a radical. There's a root growth tip, which is a root apic apical mirror stem. I don't even know how to say it. It don't matter. It really don't matter if I know how to say it. They know what they're talking about. Embryotic leaves. This is a Cody ledons. Some of you guys that know biology, I'm probably saying it wrong. It doesn't matter if I'm saying it right. They know what they're talking about. Shoot growth tip. Then we got the food store, which is a endosperm. So what's all this about? Well, they know everything about a seed. Scientists know everything about a seed, but this is what a scientist can't do. They can't create a seed. In a seed, like you take all these parts, you put them all together and they can't create a seed that creates life. Life and seed come from God. There's a miracle in every seed. There's a miracle of life, a miracle of multiplication. Scientists could break down the makeup of a seed, but they can never make a seed that produces life. So interesting, because only God provides seed. Who provides seed? God. Now the word seed, that word seed is a Hebrew word. It's, it's, they, they would say zera. God pr pronounces, I mean, he provides zera. And zera means this, what is planted. So the definition if you go back into the Hebrew of the original word, if they, don't, they wouldn't say seed. They would say this. What a seed is, they go straight to purpose. The purpose of a seed is to plant it. What's the purpose of a seed? To what? To plant it. That's what's the purpose of seed. It also means harvest. So they go straight to the purpose. So when they say seed, seed equals harvest. They're also saying, real simple, if there's no seed, there's no harvest. So that means if I want my future to change, all I need to do is change the seed that I'm planting. Change the words that I'm speaking. Change the places that I'm going. Change the behavior that I'm, that I'm applying. Change. Come on. All I need is to change that and I change my harvest. You guys get that? So if you're just a spender and you're never a planter, See, this is what God wants you to be. He wants you to be a harvester. See, when you plant seed, you're a harvester. Because you can't plant seed without having a what? Harvest. If you don't plant seed, you're a beggar. You plant, if you don't plant seed, you're a beggar. Why are you a beggar? Because you have no harvest. You can't have harvest. You have to depend on someone else's harvest. The great thing is, is every one of us can be harvesters. I don't need to depend on the government. What I mean by that is, and I'm not talking about you have a pension check. I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying, if right now we're on welfare, there's nothing wrong with getting help. But I want to let you know, you don't have to stay there. You could get to the point that you get your help, you get your seed, you start planting it, and who knows, you could have your own business one day. There's no limits of what God can do in your life. All you need is some seed and have the faith and have the, the, the strength to go ahead and plant it. You guys get that? That's how businesses start. 
That's how big savings accounts and retirement funds start. That's how ministries start. Ministries don't start with full harvest. They start with a seed. Great ministry doesn't start with seed. And I think that's the problem with most people. What they want is a full harvest, but God doesn't give you full harvest. He gives you seed. And if you plant the seed and you work the seed, then you get a full harvest. You guys get that? Say it with me. I have seed. 2 Corinthians 9.10 says this. For God is the one who provides seed. Who provides seed? Who creates seed? God. For the, far, for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. In this portion of Scripture, it's, it not only says that God provides seed, but he actually, God actually states a threefold purpose for seed. God has a purpose. God never gives a seed with no purpose. God gives a seed and he has a vision for the seed. He has a purpose for the seed. This is his purpose. Number one purpose for seed is to meet our needs. So he said, I'm going to give you seeds. You're going to plant it and then it's going to meet your needs. So a farmer is planted in a field, but the first purpose of that field coming up with a harvest is so him, so he and his family can eat. So God wants, he says, I give you seed, then bread. He gives a seed, then what? Bread. Now, we don't know too much about seed because we don't understand farming. Because we just go to Stater Brothers and everything's just there. Lettuce is there. Tomatoes are there, watermelons are there, anything you want, it's already there. So we don't think about the farming process, we just go to Stater Brothers. But God is speaking to us and he wants us to understand there's, there's spiritual significance to what I'm teaching you right now that can change a neighborhood, that could change a city, that could change a family, that could change a marriage. You could change your landscape. That means you have a field. This is what God is saying. Stop complaining about your field and start planting the right seeds in your field. You could be more educated than you are next year if you put some education this year. I mean, get that. You could be more prepared next year if you put in some seed preparation this year. You could have a return on investment next year if you could plant some seed this year. You can get some spiritual breakthroughs next year if you can start planting some seed this year. Your future is dependent on your seed. It's a very important for you to get this because if, if you don't understand that your future is dependent on your seed, you might put yourself in a victim category instead of a farmer category. When I say victim, we start thinking, well, somebody else's responsibility to help me get a harvest. And the truth is, I'm going to help you. I'm going to teach you, but I can't do something for you. I can't plant seed for you. You're here today and you know what you're doing? You're planting seed. I am here. I could be anywhere else. I'm planting seed in my future. Matter of fact, this is what you're doing. Get in seed. What are you doing? Get a seed. You're getting seed for your future. And how do you plant it? By, by listening to the instructions and doing them. You're not planting if you're just a hearer. You're just gathering seed. And you'll never get a harvest just gathering seed. You only get a harvest or you only get results when you actually plant the seed or do what's being taught. Is that right? So, so he says, purpose number one is to meet our needs. Does God want to meet our needs? So anytime God wants to meet our needs, what, he do, what does he do? He gives us seed. Um, I was looking for some videos on the internet on YouTube on seeds, like instructions on seeds. Well, I, found, I found like 20 videos. What was so interesting about every single video I found, it was all, it was all in English I barely understood. The, everyone when I was talking about seed was talking with an accent. I said, well, why? And then there was some, some teachers for little boys and little girls, like, like, in elementary, and they had all these cartoons, but then the voices were with an accent. And I go, well, God, why are all these voices with an accent? He goes, because they're teaching this in third world countries. 
And these kids will, see, these kids don't have a government that could support them. So what they do in school, they teach them about seed. And what they tell them, if you're ever going to eat in your future, you got to learn the life or the miracle of a seed and learn how to germinate or plant seed so you could have a harvest in your future. So they have to teach them. We don't teach about seed in America, but we teach about seed in the church. Come on, we're going to learn this. So purpose number one is to meet our needs. Purpose number two is to increase our resources. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources. So this is what God is saying. When you plant a seed, you'll never get a uh, harvest that's the same, the same amount that you planted. You'll always harvest more than you planted. Nowadays, what we want is shortcuts. But this is how it works. You might, get a, you might get a pumpkin seed and you could eat that seed because they're good or you could plant it. But there are times that God tells you to plant that pumpkin seed when you're hungry. So scripture says that there's times that you're sowing while you're, 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 you have seed and you're sowing and you're weeping. You're crying because it's sacrificial. It means something to you. But the Bible says, it goes on to say in Psalms 126, it says, but you're going to reap when the harvest comes in, in singing. You're going to sow in weeping, but you're going to reap with singing. What he's saying is at the end result, when you get the results of your planting, you're going to be celebrating because you're going to have the provision. Thank God you planted it. So God's speaking to us. So anytime God wants to advance us, he wants to change our lives. He wants to meet our needs. He gives us seed. So that's why I'm not intimidated going into a city that's bankrupt or going into a neighborhood with drug dealers and gangbangers and poverty. I'm not intimidated because I'm a farmer. So if I want to get different results, all I have to do is plant seed that's never been planted in that ground. There's not a problem with the ground. There's a problem with the seed. And we got gang banging that's been planting seeds. We got, we got uh, pimps that have been planting seeds. We got drug dealers that have been planting seeds. We got the devil has been planting seed. Where's the church? We show up in neighborhoods that have had harvest for generations of the enemy. And we come in and we say, no, we're going to change this city. We're going to change this neighborhood. And we're going to start planting the seed of hope, planting the seed of the word, planting the seed of change. And we go in there and we start seeing transformation because the seed works in any field it's planted. I love that. So we could change, you could change your job. I remember when I was in the, in the business world, they would hire me to turn a business around. All I would do is come with seed. I wasn't the smartest or the sharpest knife in the drawer, but, I knew, but I'm a farmer. So what I started doing was planting new ideas, new methods, new attitudes, new words, and we started changing the results. So I could go anywhere and cause change because if I have the seed, I could plant that seed in any heart, in any business, in any city, in any country, and there's nothing wrong with the seed. The seed works everywhere. Isn't that great? So that's why there's such warfare on seed. There's such warfare on your tithes. There's such warfare on your offerings. There's such warfare on your words. There's such warfare on your th thoughts. Because the enemy knows. See, the, the devil's not a, the devil has no, I mean, I want you to get this. The devil cannot, I want you to get this. He can't really plant seed for you either. You plant seed, but there's a problem. He'll give you bad seed. He say, plant this. He'll give you the wrong words and plant this. Some of us cannot get out of our own way because of the seeds that are coming out of our mouth. If you keep speaking negative over your situation, it's not going to ever turn out to be a, a positive harvest. You guys get that? So that's why when the first thing that Jesus did after he left or while he was leaving, he told the disciples, he goes, why don't you go do, do this? Go in the upper room. And this is what I want you to do. Before you go out there and talk to everybody, this is what I want, to do, want you to do. Go in a room up there and you're going to meet up with the Holy Spirit. 
and the Holy Spirit. You're going to get filled or baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's what's going to happen. But what was the result after they got baptized with the Holy Spirit? Or what was the evidence after they got baptized with the Holy Spirit? They started speaking in tongues. What does that mean? God started getting a hold of their mouth. And he knew he could change the world if I could just change the words that are coming out of their mouth. So instead of, starting, instead of them going out there speaking their words and their opinions, they started speaking under the inspiration of God's word. And God's word works in any mouth. You guys got that? You want to change your family? Stop complaining about them. Start sharing the good news with them. You want to change your job? Stop complaining about your job. Start getting new ideas and start speaking new ideas, new methods and hope into your job. You want to change your kids? Start speaking life in those kids. Start educating them with the word of God. Train them with the word of God. And when they're older, they won't depart. Start, let's, let's start changing our seed. We want to change our financial future? Let's start investing in the house of God. Let's start investing, not spending. You guys got that? Some of us are taking our seed and smoking our seed. Some of us are drinking our seed. Some of us are gambling our seed. <laughs> Some of us are eating our seed. Some of us are buying stuff with our seed. Now, I'm going to listen. Yes, God wants you to have bread, but I want you to get that there's a portion that's supposed to be planted for your next harvest. You guys get that? Okay, so now, the third purpose, the third purpose of every seed, for, th First purpose was to meet our needs. Second purpose was to increase our resources. That means multiplication. Say it with me, multiplication. The third purpose of seed is this, to meet the needs of others through our generosity. So this is what God does. He'll give you a harvest, but it's never for you just to hoard it or to hold it. Remember, we're rivers. This is what we're supposed to do is get blessed it's really important that you understand God wants to bless someone else through you. There's somebody that God's trying to touch. There's a woman, he's trying to get off the streets. We got our women's home. We just shared, she just shared. Without the women's home, she's not going to make it. There's little boys and little girls we want to pick up on the bus. But if we don't have a bus, we can't pick them up. God wants to bless somebody. There's a church he wants to build. Thank God, God, through us, he, through us, he's built a church. Through us, God's built a church. Through us, God's built a church. So God blessed us and we, were, we passed it on and we built a church. We bought seats and people are going to get saved today and people are getting saved every day. Isn't that amazing? People are getting baptized. Isn't that awesome? Where does it start? With a seed. We get blessed. But look what he says. I want to produce a harvest of what? generosity in you. Then produce a harvest of what? Generosity in you. That word generosity means God wants us to get to the point that the harvest changes our lives or changes our hearts and makes us generous. This is what happens when we start helping others with our finances and our resources. And we give our finances and resources back to God. There's a miracle that happens in the seed that you plant. This is the miracle. Your heart changes. Your heart changes. You start being forgiven. There's another word, magnanimous. You know what magnanimous means? It's a readiness to forgive insult and injury and have no resentment, have no bitterness towards people. So when we return into givers, not only are we willing, so I give my, I give, I'm generous willingly. I'm ready to give. I'm ready to share. I am ready to bring my tithes, my offerings. I am ready to help. But this is what happens as well. Your heart changes. Your character changes. And that's why generosity is so important because of the harvest it produces in us. I'm going to get that. So, so now, those are the three purposes. Now what's our part? What's God's part? He gives a seed. What does God do? He does, he gives us the miracle. It's a seed, is a miracle. And it's crazy, you could have a seed in a, in a little, little bag for a long period of time and you plant it and there's still life in it. Isn't that crazy? Not connected to nothing. You put it in the ground, it germinates and the life that's in it is activated and before you know, you got a little shoot coming up that produces fruit. 
Just amazing. Flower comes and then fruit comes. And that's just a miracle. And all you're doing is putting the seed in the dirt and watering it and looking at it. You can't make it grow, but you can what? Plant it. Someone said, I can't make it grow, but I could what? What can you do? Are we ready to be planters? Come on. You know, I was reading, I was reading this book, and um, it's called The Com Compound Effect. And I don't think the author is a Christian. But what's interesting is that he's, he's practicing or teaching Christian principles. It's about time for Christians to actually practice the principles that cause success and stop allowing the world to take God's principles and succeed, succeed. They're succeeding. It's not like they're not succeeding. They're succeeding. How are they succeeding? They're planting. They're actually practicing reaping or sowing and reaping. Look at this. This is at the end of the book. He said this. I have one more valuable success principle to pass along to you. Whatever I want in life, I've found that the best way to get it is to focus my energy on giving it to others. If I want to boost my confidence, I look for ways to help someone else feel more confident. If I want to feel more hopeful, positive, and inspired, I try to infuse that in someone else's day. If I want more success for myself, the fastest way to get it is go about helping someone else attain it, or obtain it. These are, you know what this is? Sowing and what? What he's saying is what I sow is what I'm going to reap. That means when my kid is not living right, go invest in another kid. Witness to them. Counsel them. And it's amazing how God will reach your child. This is what God is saying. You plant and then there will be a harvest. But without planting, there's no harvest. In Genesis 8, 22, it says this. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. So he's saying this is a law of nature. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and what? Planting and what? Planting and what? Is there a harvest without planting? No, this is like peanut butter and jelly. If you want a peanut butter and jelly, you got to have both. You can't call just peanut butter peanut butter and jelly because it's a peanut butter then. Or it's just a jelly. But a peanut butter and jelly has peanut butter and what? Jelly. So it's the same thing with planting. With planting comes harvest. You can't separate the two. The two come together. So if you want to harvest, all you got to do is start planting. So now let's go. There's a, there's, he says, there's another principle about planting. Whatever you plant, you harvest. Say it with me. Whatever you plant, you what? So you should not be surprised. The seed is not confused. That means if you even misname the seed and you plant it, that seed knows what it is and it'll come up to exactly what is created to be. So we just need to find out what kind of life do we want. Now, what results do we want? In Galatians 6, 7, it says this. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. You will always harvest what? Now, you know what that means? Don't try to trick yourself and plant bad seed and think you're going to have this wonderful life. You're only tricking yourself. It's not going to work. You know what it's saying? Nobody gets away with nothing. So right now, if you're married and you're committing adultery right now, you're only deceiving yourself. You think that you're the Mac Daddy. You're like, you're, you're tricky. No one knows. And, but understand, you're farming. You're planting seed. And it's going to come out to the surface. You can't hide it. You guys get that? So when you're planting seed, this is what's gonna, it's going to come out into the open. I wonder how much secret stuff we're doing even now that your wife doesn't know, your husband don't know, your kids don't know, but there's a problem. You're planting seed. He goes, you're deceiving yourself. You're misleading yourself because you will harvest what you plant. And we're here not to dog you. We're not here to put anybody here down. We're here to understand if I want a bright future, I got to start planting the right seed. 
that right? You, are, you, you want a great retirement? You're going to start planting seed today. That's the way it works. You can't eat all your seed. You got to plant some seed. All right? You always harvest what you what? You always harvest what you plant. So when God wanted to save the world, he wanted, he wanted sons and daughters all over the world. He wanted sons and daughters for, through all generations. What does he plant? His son. He plants his son to get sons and daughters. It's still a principle of sowing and reaping. If he doesn't plant his son, he doesn't get a harvest of sons and daughters. He plants his son, he gets more than he planted because there's billions of people that are called, have called on Jesus as their savior, but there would not be a harvest of souls if God did not plant his son, bury his son, and, read, and come on, crucify his son so we could live. Look at John 20, 12, 24, it says this, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in, is planted in the ground, where, where is that at? Let's put a, I can't even read my own writing. John 12, 24. Oh, I'm sorry, John 12, 24. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted, that's right, unless it's planted. You guys got that? John 12, 24. It's just saying in the ground, and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Now this scripture says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone, but its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. This kernel that needed to die, Jesus was talking about himself. And he's saying, unless I die, there's no new lives. Unless I die, no one receives eternal life. Unless I die, no one becomes sons and daughters. So Jesus had to plant himself. The father had to plant the son to get sons and daughters. That's just the way it works. Whatever you plant, you what? Harvest. Whatever you plant, you what? How many want to change your future? There's future in your seed. There's future plants, there's future lives in your seed. And this is the last thing I want to end it with. After we plant our seed, God is the one that does the miracle of growth. After we plant our seed, God is the one that causes the miracle of growth. And 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7 says, I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it. This is interesting. I planted, Paul in the Bible saying, I planted a seed in your hearts. What, what was the seed he planted? The word of God. He planted the word of God. That's why without preaching or without us sharing the word of God, no lives are changed. Right now I'm planting seeds in your heart so they could produce a harvest of righteous living, a harvest of change, a harvest of new beginning, a harvest of salvation, a harvest of breakthrough. I pray you're receiving the seed. But it goes on to say, Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. Who made it grow? It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes it grow. It was God who made it grow. What's important, it's not important who does the planting. You know why I said it's not important? Because anyone could plant. It's saying Anyone could get results. Anyone could get a harvest. I've met some real rich, rich people that aren't real smart. And I'm like, how could you be rich? You're like, not smart. <laughs> you don't have to be smart to be rich. You just have to plant seed. Some of us are too smart to start gaining because we start talking ourselves out of everything. I'm not good enough to serve. Come on, stop it. You're gifted. You can do great things for the Lord. Come on. We could do this. Right? Right now is not the right time. Well, when is it, when is it going to be the right time to plant? Well, I'm waiting for perfect weather. If you wait for perfect weather, you never plant anything and you'll never have a harvest. I want for the sun and the moon to align. Stop worrying about an eclipse. 
It's time now to start serving. It's time to start going to the next level, even showing up to the building. It's time to start tithing. It's time to start bringing an offering and take care of some bricks so we could go to the next level. Because in every seed that you plant, there's a spiritual harvest, there's a physical harvest, and there's a harvest for you and your family. It's not important who does the planting. What's important is that God makes it grow. So anytime, just get this, God wants to change your life, meet your needs, or change the world, he does this. He gives you seed and planting instructions. He'll give you seed and what? There's a story in the Bible of this lady, and she's a widow, and there's a famine across the land because it hasn't rained for years. She's down to a handful of flour and oil at the bottom of her container. to make. She has enough to make a little bit of bread for her son and daughter. And her goal or her vision is that after we eat this last meal, we're just going to die. So God is ready to provide her need and change her life. So he sends a man named Elijah from another village, from another town, from another vicinity. And he says, Elijah, go to this little village called Zarephath. And there's a lady, a widow, that I've instructed her to feed you. So Elijah gets on his horse or walks or runs. I don't know how he gets there. He gets there and he sees this widow as soon as he enters the city gates. And he sees this widow gathering sticks. And he says, what are you doing? And she says, what I'm doing is gathering sticks because I'm going to make our last meal and then me and my son are going to die. This is all, this is it. And then he says, honey, can you give me, give me some water? Now, remember, it's a drought. There's no water. Water's life. And she goes, okay. So she, she goes to get him water. But she's going to get water. He stops, says, no, honey, stop, 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 stop. Would you get me some bread too? What a bold ask. In a famine, you want water, which we, hardly, we don't have any. It doesn't rain. And you want the little bread that I got. So she says, Elijah, let me tell you the truth. I don't have any bread in my house. And all I have is a handful of flour and some oil. That's all I got. And he tells her, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This is what I want you to do. Do what you said. Go make the bread. Gather the sticks. Start cooking. But before you actually eat anything, bring me the bread and water first. And this is what God promises you. If you bring me the water first and the bread first, God promises you during this whole drought, your flour will never run dry. Your container of oil you'll always have. God is going to say, this is what he's going to do. He's going to provide a ha harvest of his provision. Just do what God has told you to do. So she does it, and the Bible says she plants a seed. What's her seed? She gives the prophet bread, her only little bread. Then she goes back to her flower bin. There's still flour. She pulls out more. Then she looks at oil, and there's more oil. She keeps baking, and she can keep on baking for the whole neighborhood. As a matter of fact, she could have a party now, invite the whole neighborhood, because she is now in her harvest because she was willing to plant her sacrificial seed. Wow, that was such an amazing.